Thanks once again to the canon information from the Avatar Legends role-playing game, we now know the potential origins and founder of the Yuyan Archers. And the coolest thing about this person is that they did not start off as a deadly assassin of stealth. Hey folks, my name is Antoine, your resident geek, and today we'll be diving into the all-new character, Uzuku Yuyan of the Fire Nation. Please forgive me, I am probably mispronouncing that name. As a note, all information from this point on is coming within a four-year period in the Avatar timeline between Fire Lord Sozin's coronation in 58 BG, before the Airbender genocide, to Avatar Roku's wedding in 54 BG. And of course, this is all sourced from the canon Avatar Legends role-playing game. If you want to stay up to date as I go through my coverage of all the new lore, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. The Yuyan Archers were a group of elite, highly skilled Fire Nation archers. We were first introduced to them in the 13th episode of the first season titled The Blue Spirit. In that episode, Commander Zhao enlisted them to apprehend Avatar Aang while he was alone. And a lot of fans forget this, but the Yuyan archers are one of the few groups to successfully take down Avatar Aang, which is especially significant because they are all non-benders. This is just speculation on my part, but I have the feeling that they were also responsible for taking down the stragglers of the Airbender genocide. They were coveted by the Fire Nation because of their lethal precision and accuracy with the bow and arrow, but they did not start off that way. They began with a single person, not a group, who made her name in the world of sport and art, not combat and war. During the early reign of Fire Lord Sozin, there was a markswoman named Uzuku Yuyan. For her, Loosing an arrow from a bow was a spiritual act, requiring perfect harmony between the archer and the tool. Quickly, her skill with the bow grew and grew until her technique was transformed into an art form. I don't know if it's just me, but that description sounds a lot like the samurai depicted in The Last Samurai, at least the way the Tom Cruise character poetically describes them during the training montages. Dope movie, by the way. Would recommend it even though it is not historically accurate. Anyway, Yuyan made such a name for herself that nobles requested lessons directly from her. And of course, when Fire Nation nobles get involved, the military is not far behind. Especially when that military is now being headed by Fire Lord Sozin, who has lofty ambitions for his career. Yuyan is an incredibly loyal individual to the Fire Nation, but she is conflicted on turning something that was meant to be an exercise in art and form into something meant for war and conflict. In looking at Yuyan's short story, I'm reminded of another Avatar character who ended up regretting her actions when teaching an elite group the deadly art of combat. That character, of course, was Avatar Kiyoshi and the Dai Li, who Kiyoshi taught to protect the cultural heritage of Ba Sing Se, since during that time the Earth Kingdom was sort of crumbling, at least according to the Escape from the Spirit World online game. And it makes me wonder if Yuyan was presented a similar case from Sozin himself, as we know, the Yuyan archers do become a fierce tool for the Fire Nation. It's likely the Fire Lord convinced Yuyan that her gift was meant to protect and uphold the country she loved. After all, we know from Book 3 of the original show that the Fire Nation citizens were given a lot of propaganda. The key message being that they were attempting to share and spread their prosperity throughout the world. Or perhaps another scenario is that Yuyan's teaching methods were stolen, but her name was still used after the betrayal. It would be interesting if, after the Airbender genocide, Yuyan left the Fire Nation like Kiyoshi left the Earth Kingdom to teach an all-new group how to fight back. Who knows, maybe Longshot of the Freedom Fighters learned from the descendants of Yuyan's splinter group. After all, the Western Earth Kingdom isn't very far from the Fire Islands. But now we are getting into the territory of major speculation, so I'll wrap things up here. In the next video in this series, we'll continue taking a deeper look at the Fire Nation and what they were up to during Roku's era, from the disasters that would have led to the Fire Nation's eastern migration, to dragon hunting, and more. And tell me what was the most interesting bit of information you discovered in this video. Do you think that Yuyan stayed loyal, or do you think that she would have splintered off? Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace! Love, and remember, be water, my friends.